Welcome back to your third DB2 tutorial. In this video, we are going to be talking about data structure. So we've gotten our hands and feet wet a little bit in the previous video, but now before you go making a fool of yourself, you should have some general things in your mind so that you don't make yourself look like an idiot, right? So that's what this video is for, to make you not look like an idiot. <laughs> Essentially, the goal is to teach you the very basics of data structure and data types. Let's start with data structure. Now, in the first video of this series, we talked about structured and unstructured data. That's not exactly what I'm talking about. I'm talking about if you just zoom out a little bit and you look at the big picture of your database. So if we represent our database here like this, and now I just want you to envision zooming in on the database. Okay, sort of like, you know, those movies where they zoom in on someone's arm or something and then it goes into their cells and all that cool stuff. That's what we're doing here. <laughs> so you zoom in. Well, all of our content is going to be organized in schemas. So this is a very important word in DB2. And it's basically just a super fancy word for groups. So we can have multiple schemas in our database. These are just logical groupings. We can decide how we want to organize our tables by putting them in different schemas if we so desire. All right, now we're zooming in and we zoom in onto the schema. Well now, inside of the schema, we're going to have multiple tables. All these tables share a schema, but the tables themselves don't necessarily have to be related. Some of them might be using relationships. So when you have tables where the data is connected between tables somehow, this is known as a relationship. We are going to get into all the boring details of relationships, but we'll save that for another video. <laughs> for now, just know that our data can be connected using relationships. Now, the way you structure these tables, well, generally a table describes one thing, and it's going to store multiple of those one things. So for example, users or vehicles but you never combine multiple things in one table. For example, putting the users and the vehicles in one table, you just don't do that. <laughs> You'll understand why later, but for now just understand that every single table describes one individual kind of thing. So we'll see that more as we zoom in on a specific table. Well, let's say we zoom in right here and I'll bring that down here. Well, we might be looking at this table right here and we'll say this is the users table. Inside of this table, we're going to have columns. So the columns go this way. And generally, we're going to have a column header, the name of the column. So for example, we can have the user ID. And now, every single entry in this table is going to be a new user. So we can have one, some data, and so forth. That is one specific user. And then we can have another user. These that go this way are called rows. I don't really know what this zooming illustration is helping with, but I just like to visualize zooming deeper and deeper into the structure of our database. When we zoom into this column, I'll make it extra big. Well, this is going to have a data type. A data type is just a type of data, as you could probably figure out from the name. <laughs> Essentially, there are restrictions on what kind of data we allow in this column. So there are different categories of data types that we are going to discuss in this video. There are a lot of data types and it's important you don't spend years and years studying the data types before you really understand databases in general. So what I recommend is you learn the basics of data types, then learn all the other things with databases and then come back and learn all the details with the data types. The very first thing you're going to want to start with is the data type categories. So these are the general categories for data types. This is pretty universal, so any kind of relational database is going to have data types in these categories. So when we talk about numeric, that means anything dealing with numbers. Strings, on the other hand, are characters, you know, like things you type on the keyboard, spaces, tabs, all that good stuff. And generally you represent these using quotes, either a single quote or a double quote. Generally for databases, we use a single quote. So I could say something like this. This is an example of a string. Temporal, this deals with dates and times. Once you got these categories down, there are some very specific data types that go in these categories that you should know. I'll be explaining some of the data types we'll be using in the upcoming videos. That way when it comes up, I don't have to spend a lot of time explaining what everything means. The very first data type that I would like to share with you is called an int. So int is short for integer. Anytime we're dealing with integers, we are talking about whole numbers. So like 16. If you had 16.07, for example, that's not a whole number. 
because you have a fractional part. So this is not an integer. This though is. So integer, whole number. The next is char and varchar. These deal with strings. There is a minor difference between char and varchar in that if you're dealing with a char column, all of the data for that column is going to be of the same length. So for example, five characters. Varchar, on the other hand, is designed to store variable length character data. So I just think variable character. So that might be, you know, a comment or something that's not always going to be the same length. The next is Boolean or Boolean. This is designed to store something in two states. So usually this represents true or false. But you can interpret it how you want. On, off, yes, no, high, low, strong, weak. However you like, as long as it has two states. The next data types are date, time, and timestamp. These are the temporal data types. Date just stores a date. Temporal data types, history or in the future. Time will store a specific time of some day. It doesn't actually store the date part. So the date is irrelevant for this data type. Or you can have kind of like a combination of both in what's called a timestamp. So this is kind of just like an instant in time, past, present, or future. That is a general overview of data structure and how we are going to approach the next videos. Now that you have this under your belt, you will understand what it means when you have what's called a fully qualified name. So a fully qualified name looks like this. Schema.tableName. Now this obviously is an example, so it's general, but this is going to be some table name, such as users, and then this is going to be whatever schema that table is a part of. This allows us to be very specific about what table we're talking about. That way, the database knows what schema we're in. So once again, this is called a qualified name. And in computer science, or maybe in real life, I don't know, when you qualify something, you basically prefix it with some more information so you know what we're talking about. So if you didn't qualify this table, it would just be users. But if you qualified it, you'd put schema.users. That's all I got for you guys, so thanks for watching. Be sure to check out the blog for this video. Give DB2 a try. Check out my website, subscribe, and as always, have a great day. Actually, I think that's the first time I've ever said that. <laughs> I don't know. Well, in these videos, not ever. Okay, I'll see you in the next video. Please be sure to subscribe, and yeah, that's all.